They've been cursed with perfect weather. It was their fifth day aboard the Odysseus, the magnificent sailboat Dad had chartered for the family getaway, and the fourth since Penelope had last spotted land, or pretty much anything worth seeing. It was getting more and more difficult to tear the days apart, and Penny felt the restlessness in the pit of her stomach grow with each day. The adults said they found the monotony therapeutic, but for Penelope, it just seemed like a smooth voyage into an azure hell of never-changing emptiness. Sometimes she felt that the void around them is about to swallow them whole. That is, if she didn't drown in boredom first. I'm so sick of the sea, she sighed. You can use my bucket if you need to barf again, Penny. Sebastian, only seven years old, but already a gentleman at heart, offered her his baby blue plastic bucket, the kind that kids usually use for building sandcastles. Thanks, Seb, that's very generous of you. The Odysseus was spacious for a boat, but not big enough to avoid other family members. Their dad spent most of his time at the helm, looking over the navigational systems in the stern, and Arista, their new stepmom, usually stayed inside to protect her delicate skin from the salty air and the sun rays. So Penny mostly found herself on the deck, in the company of Sebastian, her little brother, gazing at the waves and getting bored out of her mind. Don't you get tired of this? she asked. How could I when there's so much to see? Just today, I think I saw a school of bluefin tuna. Isn't that the coolest ever? Seb answered, his face lighting up with childish enthusiasm. What was a nightmare for Penelope was a dream come true for her little brother, the fish geek. Seb always took a special interest in the sea, and he just wouldn't shut up about all those different species of aquatic animals that Penny had never even heard of. Fish spotting, the nautical equivalent of bird watching, was his favorite pastime, so he was having the time of his life. Penelope couldn't help but envy him a little. Sometimes I dream of it, you know, continued Seb, with a deep longing on his face. Of what? The abyss. Penelope's heart skipped a beat. It can't be. What do you mean? she asked. The unusual rasp in her own voice made her sound like a stranger. She's never talked to Seb about her nightmares. There is simply no way he would know. I'm down there, in complete darkness. I'm swimming alone, and all these creatures come swirling around me. His brother seemed serious. What creatures, Seb? There's just no way. Or is it possible he's having them too? The normal stuff, I guess. Deep sea anglerfish, common fangtooth, giant isopods. He counted on his fingers. Did you know that scientists used to think that there would be no life below the Bathia zone, but then the probes have proven that life's quiet abundant down there. I bet they feel silly now. Penny felt a huge wave of relief wash over her. Seb was talking about fish. Of course he was only talking about fish. I bet they do. They say that more is known about the moon than the deepest parts of the ocean, Seb continued. Can you believe that three quarters of the ocean floor lies within the abyssopelagic zone and we don't really know what's down there? Don't you wonder what they might find in the future? Our lord and savior Cthulhu, probably, Penelope thought darkly. She still couldn't shake this strange sense of impending doom that weighed heavily on her shoulders. You're a weird kid, Seb, she said as she patted her brother on the head. Thanks, he answered without skipping a beat.